Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. So, Kaldheim spoiler season has finally started. Ish. Kind of. It's kind of a confusing spoiler season. If you haven't seen my episode yet on the Kaldheim spoiler season schedule, go ahead and check that one out. It kind of explains basically the whole thing. We're going to be getting some spoilers apparently today, tomorrow, and the next day, which is December 15th through 17th. And then again on the 24th of December, Christmas Eve. And then spoiler season officially starts on the 7th of January, yet we are getting these kind of pre-official starting spoilers that are also official. Regardless, today we got our very first officially spoiled spoiler, I think that's right, from Kaldheim with Showdown of the Scouts. I guess I should say that uh, there were other spoilers today that came out as well, but those are the pathways and those were already confirmed to be in the set, so... Yeah, this is the first official spoiler in my mind. Anyways, Showdown of the Scalds is a saga, an enchantment saga, that costs two red-white. So like other sagas, as this saga enters the battlefield after your draw step, add a lore counter sacrifice after the third one. The first one is going to be exile the top four cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play those cards. Second and third do the same thing. Whenever you cast a spell this turn, put a plus plus one counter on target creature you control. So, a lot of cool things happening here. Number one, sagas are back. Awesome. So yeah, basically, Sagas, I believe, start off in Dominaria, uh, and then came back in Throne, not Throne of Eldraine, sorry, but came back in the second Thero set, and they're basically kind of like storytelling pieces, as well as just really cool kind of effects that are enchantments that kind of have these effects, and they stick around for, you know, a turn or two, and then they go away after they've done what they've done. But yeah, this is basically just a value engine in Boros. So yeah, four mana, basically exiling top four cards of your library, being able to play them until the end of, next, end of your next turn. That's impulse draw. So basically four, draw four somewhat. Again, impulse draw, impulse draw isn't the exact same as drawing because you only have temporary access to those cards. But still for Boros, that's fantastic. I can see this card becoming, I don't want to say a Boros staple, but basically this is just a fantastic draw spell for Boros or card advantage spell, I should say, for Boros, which they, you know, are, are somewhat lacking in. So yeah, this is just, you know, four mana, a kind of like draw four cards. So this is just, it's going to see a lot of play. And then again, it's going to have some additional benefits too for a lot of decks. You know, that second and third lower counter, that's not irrelevant. You know, whenever you cast this, uh, a spell this turn, put a plus plus one counter to our creature you control. You know, if you're playing a Voltron deck, you can get that creature bigger. Even if you're just trying to grow some, you know, smaller creatures to protect them, that can be good as well. And decks that are looking to cast a lot of spells, you can get a creature pretty huge, even in those one or two turns. You can cast, you know, if you're playing a Spellslinger deck, you can cast, you know, upwards of five, six spells and get a lot of counters on one thing or multiple things. This can be a very useful card. On top of that, if you've got a way to blink this card, yeah, you're going to be getting even more value out of it, resetting those lore counters, getting that ETB, and essentially... Yeah, uh, Impulse Drawing for four again, so that can be a ton of value. Uh, let's just talk really quickly about Impulse Draw, kind of in case you're not entirely familiar with it. An example would be Commune with Lava, which is an X spell that's basically kind of an X example of it. Uh, exile the top X cards of your library until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. Yeah, that's basically what Impulse Draw is. It's, you know, temporary card advantage, like I mentioned earlier. It's not going to be, you know, um, you know you're not going to be able to hold on to those cards forever, but again, if you're playing in a Boros deck, you're going to be trying to play things quickly for the most part, usually. Let's just say that. Anyway, so yeah, Impulse Draw is kind of the same as drawing when it comes to those types of decks. Uh, we've actually seen kind of Boros get better and better um, options when it comes to card advantage spells. I mean, recently we got Heartwarming Redemption, which is a decent draw spell. Discard the cards in your hand, then draw that many plus one. You gain life, kill the number of cards in your hand. So this is kind of like a wheel effect, but it replaces itself as well. So again, you're not getting kind of direct draw spells when it comes to red and or white. Definitely not white. Uh, but yeah, you've got now a new way, you know, with that impulse draw or a new-ish way with that impulse draw 
that they're starting to kind of really lean into, which I'm happy to see. And I'm hoping to see even more impulse draw, draw cards in the future in Boros. But yeah, this is going to be a fantastic uh, a saga addition to, to many Boros decks. Let's talk about some Boros commanders that might want this. Feather the Redeem was the very first one to come to mind. Uh, whenever you cast the in source sorcery spell targets a creature you control, exile that card instead of putting it into your graveyard as it resolves. If you do return that, that card to your hand at the beginning of the next end step, yet yeah, this card is saying, hey, cast a bunch of small things, uh, basically small instants and sorceries that target, you know, Feather, you know, pump Feather up, make Feather bigger. So yeah, basically just, yeah, impulse drawing to get more spells to cast. And then, yeah, after you get the second and third lore counter, being able to get Feather even bigger with those plus plus one counters, it seems like a perfect fit for that kind of a deck. Again, even just in decks that, you know, those plus plus one counters might not really matter too much in, like a Fire Song and Sunspeaker or Depala Pilot Exemplar. Yeah, just the fact that you can basically, you know, draw four again for four mana is going to be big for those decks as well. So, yeah, I, I'm not sure if there's going to be too many Boral decks that aren't going to be looking to add this card just because, again, of that first lore counter. And again, there's going to be definitely ones out there that are going to say that second lore, that second and third lore counter can really help them out as well. Speaking of that, let's talk about some commanders that are outside of Boros. Merith, Lycia, and Zergo were three that came to mind. Merith deals with possible swing counters, so getting more counters on it can be huge. Again, Lycia can be a Voltron-type strategy. You can get Lycia huge and start swinging through, so getting more counters on that, as well as Zergo, definitely a Voltron-type strategy with Zergo. But again, just the fact that you're getting kind of that extra, you know, temporary card advantage can be huge for a deck that's really looking to add that in. One more thing I want to mention is, again, I did talk about how sagas are coming back. You know, at least this is showing that sagas probably are coming back. I highly doubt this is a one of, you know, no other sagas in the entire set. But up to this point, we've only ever seen monocolored sagas. So yeah, this is kind of branching into multicolor sagas, which is really exciting. And maybe this is part of a cycle. You never know. We might see. Actually, although... I do need to mention that uh, Eddie did uh, did say that actually I'm incorrect in saying that multi this is the first multicolor saga because of the Legend of Arena. But yeah, I I don't count that one. So nice nice try, Eddie. Uh, anyways, actually, if you don't know what the Legend of Arena is, go ahead and check out the most exclusive Commanders episode where I talk about kind of cards that there are only very few copies of, if maybe even only one copy of for some of them. Technically legal cards in Commander, though it's pretty much impossible to get your hands on them. Uh, anyways, uh, Showdown of the Scouts, I think it's a really exciting direction for Sagas. You know, again, going into multicolor is really exciting. And then also, yeah, this just a, it's not, I'm not going to say an auto-include for Boros, but it's definitely one a lot of Boros decks should be considering. Again, Impulse Draw, Temporary Card Advantage. Boros decks are looking to get kind of whatever card advantage spells they can in this one. Seems to be a very effective card. But yeah, now it's my turn to hear from you. So let me know what your thoughts on this quick take are. What do you think about this saga? And yeah, what do you think the direction of other sagas for the set is going to be? So yeah, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.